everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today we're checking out the history of Van Cleef and Arpelt. That is how you pronounce it in French. However, in English you can say it Van Cleef and Arpels. But to stay faithful to the original, let's say Van Cleef and Arpels. Now let us get started with the history of this awesome jewelry brand. But of course, before we get started, make sure you leave a big thumbs up to this video, subscribe to the channel and also turn on notifications for more videos like this. Van Cleef & Arpels watchmaking has naturally developed as a jewelry accessory until it has become today a privileged area of expression for the house, playing in turn on the refined elegance of the Pierre Arpels models and the poetry of its extraordinary dials and poetic complications collections. Van Cleef & Arpels is restoring its letter of nobility to the craft which have made its reputation for more than a century. It all started with a love story. In 1895, Estelle Arpels, daughter of a precious stone trader, married Alfred Van Cleef, son of a lapidary craftsman and diamond broker. Having the same values, the taste of adventure and precious stones, as well as the aspiration to build something sustainable together, the couple joined forces in 1906 with the Estelle brothers to open their first eponymous store at 22 Place Vendôme. Van Cleef and Arpels never left this legendary address ever since. The young couple shared the same views, boundless enthusiasm, a conquering spirit, a deep sense of family and a passion for precious stones. By combining their two names, they founded Maison Van Cleef & Arpels in 1906. On June 16, 1906, Van Cleef & Arpels were the first jewelers to settle in Place Vendôme. The shop opens its doors in front of the Ritz. It was run by Charles, one of Estelle's brothers, with whom Alfred Van Cleef is associated. Two years later, Julian, Estelle's other brother, joined them, then her third brother, Louise, in 1912. At that moment, there was an era called the Belle Epoque in French, which was a name given to a period of French and European history dating between 1871 and the outbreak of World War I in 1914. This Belle Epoque inspired the creation of the house, which quickly showed in its modern and creative style. The label became very popular with elegant women in the upper echelons of society. The years between 1926 and 1939 were marked by an artistic alliance which affirmed the style of Van Cleef & Arpels. René Puissant, daughter of the founders Estelle and Alfred, took over the artistic direction of the house and joined René Simblacas, designer and talented creator. Together, they built the aesthetic heritage of Van Cleef & Arpels and created some of its most famous pieces, including the precious Minodier box and the Passepartout necklace. In 1933, the famous Certi Mysterieux was patented, a unique technique for setting stones without any visible metal claw. This process became the trademark of Van Cleef & Arpels. During this time, Jack and Claude took over the management of the brand in Paris and the responsibility of opening a boutique at 744 Fifth Avenue in New York in 1942. The very essence of the brand lies in the delicacy and poetry of the creations, infusing lightness and movement into the most precious materials. One of the strengths of the house is in fact to make the metal erase in favor of an enhancement of stones and color associations. But the brand is characterized above all by its technical inventiveness, with transformable pieces such as a necklace becoming a bracelet, thanks to a clever zip system suggested by the Duchess of Windsor, or transforming into a belt thanks to a detachable clip. In watchmaking, the dreamlike universe of the brand is also evident on the dials. Among the inspirations of the collections, besides the tales and legend of fairies and sirens, we find nature, from the flapping of butterfly wings to the blossoming of a cherry blossom the elegance and ingenuity of its creations, but also by the use of the precious and rare materials, the house is able to seduce royal families around the world. Like that of Monaco, whose Prince Rainier III gave Grace Kelly a pearl and diamond set specially designed for her by the house as a wedding gift. The following year, Van Cleef & Arpels became the official supplier to the Principality of Monaco, the biggest movie stars as well as a cosmopolitan clientele are also won over. A great timeless classic of the brand, the Cadena's watch, was also created at this time. Discreetly housed in an elegant bracelet, it allows its owners to console the time without appearing to be there. At that time, it was indeed inappropriate for women to wear a watch or to look at the time. 
When World War II broke out, a large part of Arpel's family was forced into exile, except René Puisson who remained in France. In New York, Van Cleef & Arpels, which has opened an office at Rockefeller Center, was hiring artisans to apply European know-how at the request of the New World. Paradoxically, this period of war was rich at the creative level for the jeweler. In the 20th century, Van Cleef & Arpels' style is a cultural encounter between the excellence of France and the United States. In 1939, Van Cleef & Arpels gave birth to one of its most famous creations, the zip necklace. This jewel turns, once closed, into a bracelet, and soon enough, it became one of the flagship models of the house. In 1940, the first piece of jewelry representing ballerinas and fairies appeared, themes that were then emblematic of the brand. After the war, the second generation took over the management with Claude between 1911 and 1990, Jack between 1914 and 2008, and Pierre Arpels between 1919 and 1980. The latter made a significant contribution to the house when he designed a watch in 1949, which he named after him, the Pierre Arpels. Pierre took a new direction. He only used exceptional stones, like the Blue Heart Diamond and the Blue Princess Sapphire. In 1954, Van Cleef & Arpels opened La Boutique at 22 Place Vendôme, and the store offered a more accessible line of jewelry, including animal clips inspired by a cartoon style which adds a playful touch to the creation. The Alhambra collection, released in 1968, also contributed to making the brand more accessible and less reserved for the elite. Amongst the other emblematic creations of the house, there is the Alhambra collection created in 1968, with a harmonious symbol reminiscent of the four-leaf clover, the different models of which are worn like lucky charms, but also the entre les doigts rings, which pretty much renewed the art of adorning the hand. They come back regularly in different collections, adorned with flowers, butterflies, and Alhambra symbols. And let us not forget the exceptional pieces coming out of the workshop of the Mandor, the house's artisans giving birth to extraordinary jewelry and watch collections. Among them is the Poetic Complications collection, whose watches over time reveal a stroll to Paris in the starry sky, and that is thanks to complications and high-flying mechanisms that enrich the movement. There is no doubt that Van Cleef & Arpels still has great poetic stories to tell. In 1974, Van Cleef & Arpels was the first French jewelry house to settle in Japan. Two years later, it began the gradual establishment of branches on five continents, and the same year, their first fragrance was launched. Van Cleef & Arpels was acquired in 1999 by the Swiss group Richmond. The house diversifies the range of haute jewelry, just like haute couture, and it began the launch of annual collections. So let us go through some of them. Une Journée à Paris, 2006, L'Atlantide, 2007, Le Jardin, 2008, California Rêverie, 2009, Le Voyage Extraordinaire, 2010, and Bal de Légende in 2011. In 2006, Van Cleef & Arpels celebrated its 100-year anniversary and created the Lady Arpels Centenaire Watch, the first reference in the now emblematic Les Complications Poétiques collection. These watches animated by a watch movement of extreme complexity give life to a poetic animation. As you've seen, Van Cleef & Arpels have some of the most iconic watch collections I've ever seen. No wonder the brand attracts royal families. I mean, owning a piece of Van Cleef & Arpels is like holding a piece of history in your hand. And that was pretty much it for the history of Van Cleef & Arpels brand in 100 years. If you guys enjoyed the video and learned something today, make sure to leave a big thumbs up, subscribe with notifications on to never miss out on any future videos. The next video is going to be about Gucci, so stay tuned to see that video. Also, make sure to watch our previous videos if you like this one. There are plenty of other videos on this channel. But for now, I will see you later with another one.